Welcome back to GDK Retro. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, tearing apart an N64 controller. Uh, this is a working controller. Um, came with the N64 which we originally purchased. Um, most common thing you'll find on a lot of N64 controllers is a real wobble in the uh, analog stick. Uh, this one doesn't have a wobble, it actually seems fairly tight. Um, it almost seems at borderline say too tight. It's almost a little gummy moving in a few of the directions, um, but it does spring back properly. Um, so I'm wondering if there is something inside. There is a lot of gunk uh, in the hole in here it looks like, so I'm wondering if something's gotten inside uh, the controller itself uh, to prevent it from moving around smoothly. Uh, so we're going to do a tear down on this guy, take it apart, give it a good cleaning, put it back together and see if that improves anything. Alrighty, so on this guy, surprisingly for Nintendo, it actually did not use the game bit uh, screws compared to a lot of other, their other things. Uh, these are actually all just small uh, Phillips heads. So let's work on taking those out first. Okay, once all the screws are out, the two halves should come apart. That's what we missed. There are two, two, how easy it is to see in here. There are two tiny little screws way, way back in the bottom of the uh, expansion cord. And those two need to be removed as well. Are a smaller screw than the the other ones, so you will be able to tell them apart and put them back in separately. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that should come apart here. The bottom. Uh, oops. Bottom of the controller itself, uh, there's not really much to it. Mold the plastic with the uh, one little button here. Uh, this looks relatively clean, so I'm not going to pop that out. Um, so nothing super, super fancy you have to worry about on the bottom of the controller itself, other than if you need to do any cleaning on it. The okay. If you look here on the actual controller itself, uh, you have your shoulder buttons. Both of those should just pop right out. Uh, as you can see, they're on a little pad here connected to the system board. Uh, if you are having any issues with uh, these buttons registering, uh, you would want to pull essentially this off and give the uh, undersides of each of these, the little black pad on the bottom, a cleaning. Um, this one doesn't appear to be registering any issues, so we're not going to do that on this. Uh, this is the what gets pressed down from your uh, center trigger button. It works much the same as these ones here. So same thing, you can pull this apart if you do need to. Uh, 
All right, so to pull everything apart, this mechanism here uh, is what holds the, sorry, yeah, is the uh, analog stick. So we do actually want to remove this button from the clips here, um, just so we can, it's, out, it's free and out of the way when we remove the actual analog stick. Uh, the analog stick is then connected via the small ribbon cable here. It should just pull out. There we go. That's the connector for it. And then there's one, two, three screws here uh, that need to be uh, undone to pull that whole module out. That is our analog stick out. Uh, and what's nice with this one compared to uh, a lot of the analog sticks on um, any of the newer systems, well, they're obviously probably a little more sensitive, uh, more capabilities on them. They're not as modular as this. This actual whole thing will come apart uh, to completely clean and disassemble versus a lot of the others are actually soldered onto the uh, system boards themselves. So it makes them a lot easier or more difficult to, to, to clean and to change. As you can see here, this is the board uh, for the N64. Uh, it's controller chip, and all these pads are all from all the different buttons. This one's actually very clean. Um, doesn't look like there's any any corrosion, anything else uh, getting in the way of anything really on here. Oops, all the pads are looking pretty clean. So, I'm not going to do any further teardown on this. Um, you can, if you want, remove all of these, clean all the buttons, that sort of stuff. Again, externally, this one uh, was looking very good, except for the directional pad. So, that's the only thing we're going to replace at this moment. Not replace, repair, I apologize. Um, big trick is getting this board right back down in. Uh, if you don't get it right, and if the pads aren't in the right spot, none of the buttons are going to register. Uh, correctly. So, very important that you do get everything back in the right spot. Um, even little things like this, like this pad that this just came off from here. Uh, there are little holes on it. One, two. Those match up on here. Board back in, there we go. Right, move that out of the way. So let's take this guy apart just to see if we can find what is gumming it up. There we go. The trick is doing it without snapping it. Ew, there we go. Yeah, that that'll do. Um, <laughs> that'll uh, really gum up what uh, how well this is working. So as you can see, there's a spring along here, so this detects a lot of how everything is moving. Detects uh, the with this one here. So essentially, it's all on little 
rollers and stuff so it, as it moves it's not like uh, a lot of the newer ones where it presses a button it's all based on how this is moving one way or the other uh, to turn different things this one will turn a little gear in here um, versus the, a lot of the newer ones will press down on a button based on which way that the uh, analog stick is pressed so very different mechanism uh, but whatever this white stuff is uh, is what will uh, be causing everything not to work um, this is really tiny stuff I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this uh, on camera very easily um, if I don't get it on camera we'll come back uh, with everything cleaned uh, and showing you putting it back together okay we did take it apart here so we're gonna see if we can get it back together um, definitely a lot cleaner now um, there's still some of this residue that still, as as everything dries, uh, is still appearing on some of these items. Um, again, not knowing what exactly was spilled in here uh, makes it very hard to tell uh, what it actually could be. But. Uh, Hopefully should help everything move a lot cleaner now that this is majority cleaned. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to leave uh, everything disassembled, let it get a good dry, uh, give it another cleaning, and then come back and put it together. But pretty much that's it. Your bottom socket, your catch that sits on the bottom, controls that. This one goes on top of the spring in here, and the whole thing goes back together. So we'll let this dry, give it a good second cleaning, and then come back to put it together. Okay, we've got everything cleaned here. This is a lot better. Got rid of most of that uh, residue on there. Um, generally, uh, what that is is sometimes just is on here with the rubbing back and forth it can actually wear off some of the plastic that's what most of that gunk most likely was in there um, but we have that part back together we drop the cogwheel sensors in here we drop this one in there this part's a little tricky you got to get it to the T part in here to set in the actual part down below, but you should know everything's all good when it pops up on its own. Uh, let's put the one screw back in. So there we go. It's got a much better bounce back on it. Still a little gummy on the up and down, but better than it was before where it was barely moving at the beginning. But this has a very good bounce back and it doesn't have a lot of wiggle. Um, that's one thing you can sometimes when you're completely cleaning them out, um, it'll clean out any gunk that was stopping it from moving, but it also give it way too much play and wiggle in the middle. Um, but it has some good return on it. So let's put the rest of the controller back together.
Sorry about that folks, I thought I had a spare screw. That's actually a screw from a different project. It's always one of the uh, most worrisome things, you get something completely done and then you realize you've missed a part. Alrighty, here we go. That is the complete tear apart and clean of an N64 controller. Uh, again, thank you folks for watching. Uh, I want to thank all the uh, people on YouTube out there that have helped me uh, learn a lot of the stuff, especially a uh, major throw out to uh, Retro Repairs, a fellow Canadian uh, person who does a, a lot of repair videos on YouTube. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.